do you struggle with this tightness in your stomach that just won't go away? Or maybe it's more of these constant what if thoughts that show up throughout your day and just really are a downer and plague you. If so, you might be struggling with anxiety and I wanna give you a basic understanding of anxiety, help you understand what's going on for you. So watch this video and this series as I decode anxiety for you. Hey there, my name is Diana Garcia. I'm a licensed therapist in Florida and an owner of a private practice called Nurturing Minds Counseling. All right, hit that subscribe button now to get more tips to improve your mental health, deal with anxiety, uh, level up your relationships, things like that. All right, let's jump into today's video. All right, so let's just start off with what is anxiety because I think it can get really confusing and overwhelming if you don't even understand what's happening for you. So this is information that I share with all my clients who struggle with anxiety. Okay, so anxiety is a response that you're having, usually some type of fear-based response. When we think of anxiety disorders, it's an umbrella term for these different types of disorders, which I'm gonna go through in another video. Today, I'm just gonna go like generally anxiety. So when we think of anxiety, it's helpful to understand, right? We might have a stressor, right? I uh, have an upcoming exam and then I might have an anxious response. So sometimes it's helpful to understand that I'll tell clients like, okay, it makes sense that you're feeling stressed out right now because you're dealing with a stressor. But typically once it's resolved, you notice the stress goes away. When I think of like this more generalized or constant anxiety, it's something that doesn't go away when the stressor is resolved, right? It's like this consistent feeling that you're having. Okay. Let me really explain the difference between between fear and anxiety. I know I often and people will use this term interchangeably, but it's helpful to really understand the difference, especially when it comes to anxiety. Okay, so when we think of fear, fear is present oriented, whereas anxiety is future oriented. When I say present oriented, I mean, so let's say I'm at home and I start to smell smoke and I feel like, oh gosh, is there a fire coming, right? Is, is there a fire in my house, right? In that moment, that fear response, like I am trying to prepare myself to stay alive. There is something that's happening now that I have to make sure, right? My fight or fight response kicks in to make sure I get out of here alive. Like there is a present moment threat that I'm dealing with. Fear is present moment. Anxiety is future oriented. Okay, so let's say I'm home, I'm blow drying my hair, I leave my house, I'm on my way to work, in the car I start thinking, oh my gosh, did I forget to turn off my blow dryer? Oh my gosh, is there gonna be a fire? Like, is something gonna happen? Will there be a fire at home? What will happen, right? My dog's at home. So that future oriented, right? That anxiety is about the future. It's actually, it's not happening in this moment, right? There's not a fire in your car. There's this potential thought of a threat in the future. But what happens? When you start thinking about this potential thought, this threat for the future, in the moment, your mind starts to perceive the thoughts as a threat and activates that fear response, right? That flight or flight response in the moment. So now this future-oriented threat, this thought of maybe there will be a fire in my house, is then activating this present moment fear response that now you're having in your car as if there was already a fire in your car right? So understanding that is really, really helpful. Now with anxiety, there's kind of different components that it's helpful to understand. The first component is really like the anxious thoughts, right? So it's a very common to have like thoughts of like catastrophizing, like, like thinking of the worst case scenario, uh, painting this really harsh, severe picture of the future, or even to a certain degree at times, ruminating about things that happened in the past, um, but typically, like the anxious thoughts, it's, again, there's some type of fear based about something, depending on what's the theme or what's the fear involved. And a lot of times with anxiety and the difference, like maybe what stresses me out or what triggers my anxiety versus you, it's our perception of whether we think we can handle that stressor, right? If I think it's something that I can handle, it's not maybe going to cause such a huge reaction to, to me. Whereas if it's something that I think it's outside of my coping skills or my resources in this moment, then it might cause more anxiety. There's some type of trigger that will bring on this anxious or fear-based response, right? And the thought component to that is, so for example, let's say I have a big work presentation, right? That's the trigger. And then the thoughts related to that will then could bring on this anxious response, right? So if I think I can't handle that, I am like too unprepared, I'm incompetent, I'm a fraud, right? If you struggle with some imposter syndrome, what other people think, um, I just, I'm a horrible public speaker for this presentation, right? Whatever those thoughts are. And when you have those thoughts, it's really crucial here. It's that you automatically believe these kind of 
perceptions about this situation and yourself and your ability to handle it. And it's really hard for you to kind of create any space or distance from those thoughts. Once you have those thoughts, it's like truth, reality, there's no convincing you otherwise, right? So that's one component, right? So the thoughts that start to show up, then the thoughts, right, can start to then bring on these different reactions, right? We can have this right? The actual feeling like that, uh, that emotional fear base that shows up. And then what happens is that our flight or flight system gets activated, which then can bring on some physical symptoms of anxiety, right? So when we think of kind of a uh, heart racing, difficulties catching our breath, sweaty palms, nausea, right? Different, these different symptoms that again, I will list, it's that that's really what's happening because there's a flight or flight response is being activated and triggered in this moment. So as you can see here from this image, like this is like an example of like kind of these different ranges of physical symptoms that can show up because your flight or fright response has been activated. So again, then let me back up. What is your fight or flight response? Okay, so I always get the example. Um, if you were out camping and you see a bear in the distance, right? Your immediate response, right? You're e either going to try to hightail it out of there, right? Flight. Or if when, like the bear is too close and you think you have to fight, you're going to fight. So in that moment, there's a visible threat to your life. Your body is going to prepare you to somehow um, fend off this threat and stay alive, right? So that fight or flight response, right? That adrenaline, adrenaline that's going through your system to keep you alive and prepare you in that moment to handle this threat, right? That's what happens. Now, if we go back to this uh, work presentation, what happens is that our minds start to perceive this work presentation as if it were the bear, right? As if it's a life-threatening situation and triggers this flight or flight response. Hence why when you have those physical symptoms, that's what's happening, right? Your body and mind is preparing you to, you know, deal with what it says is a life-threatening situation, which obviously it isn't. So in that moment, that's what's happening for you. Okay, so again, let's back up if we understand that. So there's the thoughts, then there's just like that feeling that shows up, right? That anxiety. Then there's the physical symptoms that show up for you because your flight or flight has been activated. And then there's a component of your behavior. So what do you do in that moment? moment when this anxious response has kicked in, right? So this anxious response is showing up and how, how do you handle it? Do you tend to then say, oh, you find an excuse not to do the presentation. You call in sick, you avoid, or you like really beforehand with your boss. And I'm like, oh, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared. Give it to someone else, right? So you might avoid. And if you avoid, which is very common with anxiety, a couple things happen. In the moment, you feel fantastic. <sighs> God, I don't have to deal with that stressor, right? The bear's not going to eat me. This presentation isn't going to eat me alive. And so now I'm okay. I'm good. Instant relief. And you literally feel it, right? Like people, you can like think about your own experience. We'll talk about like when they've avoided a situation, there's like this immediate sense of relief. And it's like, oh, right? Like I'm alive. I'm okay. I don't have to deal with it, which makes sense why we do that, right? Because we are seeking that relief. But what happens, right, that cycle, that behavior, it's actually really counterintuitive when it comes to your anxiety because that cycle, that's what actually maintains anxiety. We understand the difference and we understand how it shows up with these different triggers for us. It's helpful to understand because at the core of all anxiety disorders is this fear of fear, right? Ultimately, whatever brings on these anxious thoughts and these physical symptoms, that flight or flight reaction, right, in the moment, that fear that shows up, we are trying to avoid that reaction. Like that reaction feels too scary and too uncomfortable to deal with. Now, obviously coupled with whatever our mind tells us about it, right? So if I have this fear of driving over a bridge and the fear is um, the bridge is gonna collapse or uh, I actually have this thought often on the highway here, um, you know, I can, there's highways that I'm like on this ramp and I can see over, it's pretty high. And I think, what if I drive off, right? I have that anxious thought. And in that moment, I have this anxious response. And I have to notice that, right? Notice what's happening here in that moment. Now I'm having that fear response. Now just that thought that I'm gonna drive off this road is what's then giving me that present moment fear response. Ultimately anxiety, it's this 
fear of fear, right? That's the core and it's helpful to understand that. Let me know in the comments below, is there a specific question that you have when it comes to anxiety? Again, I'm gonna do a series about anxiety, but it's helpful for me to make sure that if there's a question I don't cover, maybe in the future I do a video about that. So let me know in the comments below a specific question that you have about anxiety. This video was helpful in giving you knowledge and understanding about what's going on for you when you're starting to have an anxious response. I want you to really understand to have some of these words and language so that next time you have some of this response in your body, in your mind, you can notice it because really noticing and being able to label it is really going to give you a level up and then needing to know what to actually do to treat it or do something different. Watch this next video in this series to continue learning more and decoding your anxiety. And of course, like I always say, I hope you continue finding ways to nurture your mind, body, and soul. Thanks, guys.